Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, our online service uh, today. My name is Albert Watson. I'm the senior pastor of the Bilston New Testament Church of God. And it is my pleasure to have you uh, uh, accessing our service today and worshipping with us. Uh, I pray that as you uh, tune in to us that you'll be blessed by the, uh, our worship, by the words, uh, and if you have a prayer need, uh, I, I will speak to you later and ask, uh, give you a number where you buy, you can ring and have you, your prayer requests uh, uh, met. Uh, before we start our proceedings, I would like us to pray and just invite the Lord to, to be with us uh, in our worship today. So Lord, we come before you this time we thank you lord for your mercy we thank you for your grace we thank you lord that you have given us this day in fact this is the day that the lord has made and we rejoice and we are glad for today lord we thank you for trinity sunday the holy spirit god the father and god the son Lord, all three together, and as we come to celebrate worship in your word, we pray, Lord, that you will be with us. We pray for the hearers, each person, wherever they are, Lord, here in the UK, across the globe, who are listening to this service, we pray for a spiritual blessing upon them and their family. Lord, whatever their needs are, we ask that you will meet them. It might be a financial need. People might be anxious. People might be frightened. People might be, be, be bereaved. Lord, uh, they might need to know you. Whatever their issue, they might be sick. We pray for healing. Allow you, the meeting today, Lord, to, to go forth in a powerful way, meeting the needs of the hearers. Lord, we ask these grace and favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're moving forward, forward now into our worship. And here at the, the Bilson Church, we, we, we love to worship. We find it a joy and a blessing just to praise the Lord. And I would like to introduce our worship team who will be doing a medley of songs in praise and worship. Can I invite you to uh, just really connect with the worship team in songs, enjoy and worship wherever you are, and may God bless you. Worship team. Be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be
Okay, I would like to remind uh, our listeners that if you have a prayer request, uh, that you could send your prayer request in. There is a telephone number at, on the screen. You just ring that number, whatever you request, um, place them, and we will be praying for you. We've got a, a prayer team who will take requests and pray for the needs of um, all hearers. Equally, I would like to um, ask that if you would wish to make a contribution to give uh, a gift, a monetary gift, then on the screen there is the church's uh, bank uh, sort code and account number. Um, you're free to uh, give an offering and we would be most uh, thankful for that. So thank you, thank you for your support. And your generosity. Yes, I alluded earlier on that today is Trinity Sunday and of course last week we celebrated uh, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Today is Trinity Sunday, so celebrated within the, uh, the Western Hemisphere churches. And it simply means really the, uh, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit working together. And today with the Trinity is here with us in our worship. I would like to read the, the scripture um, for today. And which is taken from the book of uh, Matthew chapter 11. And I will be reading uh, just three verses from that chapter. Verse 28 through to verse 30. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I think we're ready now to hear and listen to the word. And I'm delighted to introduce a very special young man. A young man whom I believe the call of the Lord is upon in his life. Uh, Minister Michael Bolt. Minister Michael Bolt is, is a minister was called by God. He has a distinct ministry. He's uh, prolific in the uh, worship field area. In fact, he's our national worship uh, leader in our church here in the UK. But I know that there is a, an anointing upon this, this young man and he's here now to deliver the word. I pray that God's grace, favour and presence will be with him. And can I invite you all to accept the minister as he comes to share and break the words to us. Minister Michael Bold, God bless you. Hello and greetings to everyone. I'd like to extend a special greeting to Bishop Watson, to Sister Watson, to the ministers, the leaders, members and friends of the Bilston Church. God bless you. Thank you so much, Bishop, for this opportunity to share uh, today. Let's pray together. Father God, we just want to thank you that you are here with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for this day. Thank you that we are alive. Thank you that we are breathing and we're able to sit and listen to your word, to worship, to fellowship and to hear what you would have to say to us. We pray, Lord, that as you speak today, you would open our hearts, our minds, our ears, even our eyes to hear and see and understand what you are saying to us and help us today or that we will not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. And may we never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. If I was able to give this time of sharing um, a title or a topic, it would be the invitation. The invitation. Now, I'm sure if I was to ask you six months ago or even uh, at the start of this year, what do you think 2020 would be like? I'm sure most of your answers wouldn't reflect uh, that which is happening in our lives right now. There's so much going on in our world. 
uh, and in our individual lives, there's so much pain, uh, loss, grief, frustration, anger, injustice, uncertainty, anxiety, hopelessness, abuse, and unanswered questions. And the list just goes on and on. But in the midst of all that's going on, I hear the voice of the Lord gently calling for us, his children, to draw near to him, to come closer to him. He's extending an invitation to us. Usually when we receive an invitation, it's a high honour, it's a privilege. If someone invites you to be in their company or invites you to their home or to a wedding ceremony or a birthday celebration, there's a sense of importance and a sense of significance because the one who has extended the invitation to you considers you to be important and would love the pleasure uh, of your company. Well, today I have exciting news. Jesus is extending a very special invitation to each and every one of us. And this invitation is from a place of love, from a place of care, and from a place of concern because we are special to him. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 reads, Come to me. This is the invitation. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. A seemingly simple invitation, yet one of such significance, and one that could change the entire trajectory of our lives. In thinking about uh, what God was saying and preparing for today, I realised how God's word is just so eternal. It's current, it's up to date. And as he extends his invitation to us, it feels as though there couldn't be a better time for us to draw near to Jesus Christ and to be in his presence. He's very specific in his invitation and he extends it to those of us who are weary and those who are carrying burdens. And some of you may be listening today and you're carrying burdens and have been carrying burdens for so long that you've even forgotten that you're still carrying them. Some of you may be so weary and so tired and you just keep going and going and pressing through the weariness that you've convinced yourself that you're okay and that you don't need to stop for rest. But one of the things I love about this invitation from Jesus is that he is very clear about what we are going to receive as we draw near. He promises us rest. And if we want to receive this rest, we have to follow the very first instruction that he's given to us. And that is for us to come to him. In recent weeks, a wonderful man of God, uh, Ravi Zacharias, he passed away and he was uh, specialised in Christian apologetics. And I came across this profound statement of his, and I quote, I think the reason we sometimes have the false sense that God is far away, because that is where we have put him. We have kept him at a distance. And then when we are in need and call on him in prayer, we wonder where he is. He is exactly where we left him. End of quote. In other words, it's not that God is far away because his word tells us in Psalms 145 that he is near to all who call on him. And the word also tells us in Psalms 34 that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And of course, Hebrews 13 tells us that he will never leave us and that he will never forsake us. Could it be that he feels so far because we failed to maintain and nurture our relationship with him. You may be listening and thinking, that's exactly how I feel. I feel as though he's far away and what does he want me to do? How am I supposed to come to him? I'd like to suggest three things that we can do to accept his invitation and to get closer to him. Three things. And the three ways uh, are prayer, through his word and through worship. Let's look at the first thing of prayer. Prayer is a means of communication with God. We use prayer to talk to God, uh, to express our feelings, our concerns, and to speak to him. 
and also to listen to him so he can speak to us. Praying is so important, so much so that in Luke 18 verse 1, Jesus explains that we are to pray always, to pray continually and that we should not faint or give up. We have to learn to be disciplined in prayer and not just to come to Jesus and come to the Father with a long shopping list, so to speak, of needs and wants and Father give me and Father give me and Father I need and Father I desire. But also we have to be disciplined enough to stop, to listen and to allow him to respond and to speak to us. Two-way communication. Hebrews 4.16 says, Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. And James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. As we earnestly pray, as we earnestly seek him and talk to him and communicate with him, we'll become closer to him. That's one of the ways we can draw near and come to him through prayer. Secondly, through his word. One of the ways that God speaks to us is through his, wit his written word. And we believe that all scripture is inspired of God or breathed out by God. The word of God helps us to understand his character, his statutes. His word guides us through happy times, sad times, and even times of uncertainty, just like we're experiencing now. And God challenges us in John 14, 15, that if we really love him, we will keep his commandments. In order for us to do this and to understand what he desires of us, we have to read and study his word. And by doing this, we'll feel stronger in our faith and much closer to God. So we come to him through prayer. We come to him through his word. And third, we come to him through worship. When we worship, we are responding to who God is and we seek to honour and please him through all that we do. Worship is more than just singing. It's more than just a song. We lift him up through our lives. We exalt him through our decisions and the things that we do. And the word of God tells us that if we lift him up, he will draw all men unto himself. We will become closer to him. And Psalms 22, 3 says that he inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise him, when we worship him, he hears us and he is present. We come closer to God. We come to him through prayer through his word and through worship. These are just some of the ways that we can accept his invitation to come closer to him. You know, in preparing for today, I was chuckling to myself. I've heard of so many stories where individuals have had major fallouts because they did not receive an invitation to a wedding or to an event that they assumed they would or should have been invited to. It's interesting, we can place so much importance on invitations and sometimes it's unnecessary. However, this invitation is one of the most important invitations you will ever receive. More important than any wedding celebration. Imagine Jesus Christ, the saviour of the world, is inviting you, is inviting me to come to him. I pray that as we seek to draw closer to God through prayer and through his word and through worship, that we will experience this rest that he has promised us. Rest and relief from our fears, from paranoia, from anxiety, from the cares and burdens of this life, and that we will stay close to him and continue to grow in relationship with him. And as we come to him, we don't have to worry if he can handle or manage that which we bring. <laughs> we can trust his might. We can trust his power. He wants us to come to him. Charles Jones composed a song which so beautifully summarizes this invitation. Hear the blessed saviour calling the oppressed. O ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come, no longer tarry. I your load will bear. Bring me every burden. Bring me every care. Are you disappointed? Wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care. Do unholy feelings struggle in your breast? 
Bring your case to Jesus. He will give you rest. Have you by temptation often conquered been? Has a sense of weakness brought distress within? Christ will sanctify you if you will claim his best. In the Holy Spirit, he will give you rest. He knows that you're tired. He knows that you're weary. He knows that you're hurting. But he's reminding you today that he is sovereign and he has a divine plan. Come to him. Trust him. Allow him to give you rest. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are drawing us to yourself. You are inviting us. You are calling us to come unto you. And I pray for everyone who is listening to this word today. I pray, Lord, that each one will be challenged, would be inspired to seek you, to be more earnest, to be more diligent in prayer through the reading and studying of your word and through worship. Lord, help us not to look to the left or to the right, but to look to you, the author, the finisher of our faith, with the assurance in your word that as we come to you, you will restore us and you will give us rest. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're listening to this today and if you don't know uh, Jesus and you want to experience rest and relief from your burdens and the, the weight of this life, I invite you to do the best thing you could ever do and invite Jesus to be the Lord of your life. At the end of today's service, a prayer will uh, appear on your screen, which you can pray and invite Jesus into your heart. If you do pray that prayer, please do get in touch and let us know. I pray that you'll have a blessed and wonderful week and that we will all accept this invitation that Jesus is extending to us. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Come to me, all you that labour and are weary and carrying burdens and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God bless you. Hear the blessed Saviour calling me over rest. Disappointed